The Pepwave Max BR1 Mini has been one of our most popular cellular solutions. Of course, there are many variables surrounding the cellular network and what is required to make a connection. We came up with a guide to help combat some common issues that users encounter. The first thing you may notice is that you connect to the Pepwave either via Wi-Fi or Ethernet and find you have no connection to the Internet. Take a look at the cellular LED on your device and it may be dark or flashing green. If the LED is dark, it means your SIM card is not being detected. The LED will start flashing once it is detected and stabilized once the connection is established. The best place to start troubleshooting is with the SIM card. The SIM card should be a standard size for hardware revision 1 and 2 models or a nano size for hardware revision 3. As shown here, SIM should be inserted with the gold contacts face down and with a notch side inserted first for slot A. Slot B will be the reverse, where the gold contacts are face up. Also ensure that the SIM has been activated with the carrier using the I of the I number. This allows the carrier to supply you with a compatible SIM card and data plan. From the manufacturer, the BR1 Mini includes two paddle style antennas for each cellular antenna port. They should be screwed onto the port's finger tight as shown here. You'll also want to confirm you have the device in good signal location. If you are not using the included antennas, test them to compare. If you are using included antennas, try swapping them out with outdoor antennas or with ones you know work with another modem. Lastly, if possible, move the device to a completely different location. This can help to rule out a location-specific issue. Connect an Ethernet cable from your computer to either Ethernet port on the PepWave, or look for the Wi-Fi network name on your computer. Unless you've changed it, this will be called PepWave with the last four characters of its MAC address after it. When prompted for the password or pre-shared key, enter the AP password from the bottom label on the router. Next, open a web browser on the computer and go to 192.168.50.1. You should see a page that looks like this. Enter your username and password, which are both admin by default. Assuming you are successful with logging into the PetWave, take a closer look at the WAN connection status at the Dashboard tab. First, we might see the status, no SIM detected. This could be because the SIM is not inserted or is not inserted correctly. We may also see the status resetting, which could just mean the system is refreshing and trying to detect the SIM card. If the WAN connection status gets stuck at connecting or obtaining IP address, we'll want to check for signal information under the Details button. Refer to where it says BAN at the bottom of the first section here. Look to the right for how to interpret the value shown. Next, we'll need to check for the APN, which stands for Access Point Name. If this is missing or incorrect, the cellular will never connect. Look under the Cellular Details, Cellular Settings section. If needed, change the operator settings from Auto to Custom and then manually enter the APN in the field below. You may also adjust the MT to see if that helps. For AT&T, it is best to use 1360. For Verizon, we're using 1428 and T-Mobile will generally use the same. Remember to click Save and Apply after making any changes. Back at the dashboard, we'll wait and see that the cellular establishes a connection. If it does, it should show its connection and signal strength in bars. Depending on the priority, you may see the status as standby instead. This means the connection is ready for when the primary connection is lost. Also at the Dashboard tab, refer to the section Device Information. Check that the firmware version is current. If the firmware is not current, go to the System Firmware page to upgrade. If the router is connected to a WAN source, you can simply check for a new firmware version and wait for the system to find it, then click Download and Upgrade. If you do not have any alternative WAN connection, you can proceed with a manual upgrade, in which case you need to open a new tab and go to Peplink's website to download the firmware file. If a firmware is current, please check the cellular module firmware next. Note that this will require an active Ethernet or Wi-Fi WAN connection on the PepWave. While logged into the PepWave, navigate to the URL and find Index. Change this to Support and refer to the cellular module firmware update. Click Check for Update. After a moment, the page will display the latest and current firmware versions. If these do not match, select the cellular module on the left under Cellular WAND and then scroll to the right to click Update. This may take about 5 to 20 minutes to complete. Before moving on, also ask yourself the following. Can the SIM card that was being used in this device be tested in another BR1 or other cellular modem? What were the results? This can help narrow down if the issue is related to the SIM card or the PepWave router. 
If after this troubleshooting, you still cannot resolve your connection issue, you can log into the web admin page successfully. Go to the status device page and download a diagnostic report. Ideally, this should be obtained while the issue is occurring or after the occurrence, but also before a power cycle or reboot, as this will cause the data to be lost. Then send it to support at 5gstore.com with details about your issue. Need more assistance? Reach out to our team by phone, email, or chat, and remember to subscribe to our channel for more helpful videos like this.